So this is in the chapter on the website, Big Band Theory. Uh, sort of a long trivia question, but there's a lot of bands that have the word D in front of them. D or the, really, is the name of the band. Then there's a lot of bands that don't have the in front of them. And so sometimes people talk about Beatles and they forgot to capitalize the. It is the Beatles. So in websites and everything, people will say the Beatles and forget to capitalize the or the. That's part of their name. You have to capitalize it. Then there's other famous bands that I talk about all the time, Eagles. And people say the Eagles. There isn't the, you never say the. Who did Hotel California? Answer, Eagles. So this little section is called to thee or not to thee. And so I want you to take some time and figure out all the bands you can think of that have the in their name. And then maybe if you have time, you have all the time because I'm going to say the word pause and then you can take as much time as you want. All the bands that people want to put the in front of that don't deserve a the. Pause. Okay, so quickly, the bands that have the word the or the in their name is the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, the Beach Boys, the Police, the Cars, the Doors, the Who, the Kinks, the Velvet Underground, the Monkees, the Cure, the Animals, the Smiths, um, who else? Uh, the Band, the Stooges, uh, and there's more, the Almond Brothers. Okay, so now the ones that don't have the or the, and people say it, the or the, and of course, Eagles, it's not the Eagles. So here they go, I'm gonna say it the right way. Eagles, Scorpions, Yardbirds, Dead Kennedys, Talking Heads, Pretenders, Grateful Dead, Dave Matthews Band, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Foo Fighters, it's not the Foo Fighters, not the Dave Matthews Band. So, I hope that gets it straightened out. Okay, next trivia question. Left-handed guitarists. Uh, and I'm gonna include bass guitarists in this uh, because actually most bass guitarists actually play guitar also. There are very few that don't play also guitar, even if it's just on their own time. So, who are famous left-handed bass players in rock. Pause. Okay, so of course, Paul McCartney, the most famous left-handed bass player. Then from Black Sabbath, Tommy, Tony Lomi, uh, Kurt Cobain, maybe the famous, most famous lead guitar left-hander, uh, Jimi Hendrix, and he actually took a right-hand guitar and flipped it upside down, but he flipped the strings upside down also, so it became a left-handed guitar. Uh, then you've got Dick Dale, so the, he's the father of surf music, not the Beach Boys, so I would give that to Dick Dale. Uh, and then here's an interesting one, Mark Knopfler, not a lot of people know that he's left-handed. And then here's a really sort of a trick question, Steve Morse from Dregs, Dixie Dregs, he tours with Purple, an amazing guitarist, so fast. Uh, and almost never does hammer-ons and hammer-offs. He's so good with just picking. But he's actually plays a right-handed guitar, but he is left-handed. Uh, when I met him one time and asked for his autograph, I noticed he's signing with his left hand, and sure enough, he's left-handed. He just, you know, it's hard to get a right-handed guitar sometimes. So, I mean, a left-handed guitar, so you learn to play right-handed. And in some uh, venues, I think, my own personal, your right handed, your right hand is such a better um, dexterity and coordination, and that's what should be on the fretboard anyway. Why is it holding a pick? Okay, next question. Twins in rock and roll. So this is twin brothers. Now I'm not talking identical twins, also some of them are. Twin brothers that are in the same rock and roll band. There's not many, but I bet you that you don't know some of these bands and you've listened to them all your life and two of the brothers are twins or that they are brothers. I think you would know they're brothers, of course. Pause. Okay, the first one that blew my mind is ACDC. 
So Malcolm Young and Angus Young are actually twins. I never knew that. Of course, I always knew they were brothers. They have the same last name. Okay, along with that, we've got twins in Radiohead, the band Nelson, those are identical twins. Uh, Rick Nelson from um, <laughs> uh, went to a garden party. His two sons, identical twins, they started a band called Nelson. Of course, Bee Gees, I don't call them rock, but uh, Maurice and what was the other guy's name? Um, anyway, the two brothers, not Barry of Gibbs, they are twins. And then Greta Van Fleet, our late bloomer cla rock, classic rock. There's actually three brothers in the band, not the drummer, and the lead singer and the lead guitarist are twins. I think, I don't know, they might be identical twins. I can't remember now. Okay, new question. This is bigbandtheory.net. There's quite a few people in rock that at some point sort of went crazy in their life. And uh, I want you to name one, two, or three, or as many as you can, rock and rollers that somehow went off the charts, disappeared, went crazy for a time, forever, or disappeared, we never saw them again. Pause. Okay, the first one that comes to mind is Pink Floyd was really sort of started by a guy named Sid Barrett. And a lot of people give him a ton of credit for developing the band, the sound, the concept between them. And Sid Barrett, pretty much went crazy. Um, Fleetwood Mac, way before Stevie Nicks and um, Lindsey Buckingham, they had a guitarist, uh, Peter Green, and he is amazing. A great singer, great guitarist, he went crazy. Another one is Keith Moon. You could tell he was crazy just on stage, and he tore up uh, motel rooms, hotel rooms, everything he could get, he went crazy. Um, another one, a lot of you guys know, Brian Wilson went crazy sort of for a long time. I think he got back on track. I don't know how he did it. Maybe he had a chemical imbalance. Um, and I think those are the only ones I can really think of right now, but there's probably others. Okay, a new question is, this is, uh, Interesting, so Eddie Van Halen, I've already asked a trivia question. Who is his favorite guitarist to listen to? Favorite guitarist for influence. Well, his favorite guitarist to listen to was Eric Clapton. Favorite guitarist for influence was Alan Holsworth. But one of his favorite rock songs was what? Pause. Okay, one of his favorite rock songs was, I think off the Motorhead album, and it was Deep Purple, Smoke on the Water. And it's a classic, everybody learns, but Eddie saw the amazing power in that song. And that was one of his all time favorite straight ahead rock and roll songs. Okay, another tr uh, trivia question. A lot of guitarists, maybe almost every guitarist uses a pedal board and most of them use Velcro. But there's one board in the world, only one, that uses magnets instead of Velcro to hold the guitar pedals to the board. And those same magnets suck in the power and bring it to the pedal because each pedal is usually nine volts DC. So what is the name of that pedal board and who invented it? Pause. Okay. So the name of the world's only magnetic pedal board is called Earthboard, and they're available on earthboardmusic.com. And so you can buy one yourself or at least check it out. And the inventor of that is me. So this has turned out to be a plug for my pedal board, earthboardmusic.com. Okay, next video or video four, uh, rock and roll trivia is this is bigbandtheory.net is the um, song Live or Let Die by Paul McCartney. It's an amazing song. And so how did he write that? What was the unusual circumstances to come with with that? Da 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 Sounds simple now because we know the song, but how did he actually stumble across 
creating such a unique, catchy uh, riff. Pause. Okay, Paul McCartney is left-handed, and he grabbed a right-handed guitar once, and when he started playing the standard A minor um, chord lead that we all play on the fifth fret, uh, we, let's call it uh, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He just was playing an A minor scale, but because the string, the high string was up high, normally that's the bass string, he played that as what a normal riff all of us would play, and with the guitar upside down, that came out. So it was sort of an accident that any of us sort of get muscle memory, we start playing the same thing. Luckily, Paul McCartney grabbed a right hunted guitar that day, started goofing around and saw the beauty of playing an A minor riff upside down, which is no longer an A minor riff. Okay, trivia question. In the band Emerson, Lake and Palmer, at Keith Emerson, if he isn't creative enough with all the synthesizer music that he wrote and was doing synthesizer stuff like Lucky Man on that Moog synthesizer, by the way, it's Moog, not Moog, analog synthesizer, it was just unbelievable stuff. But you gotta check out the song, Just Take a Pebble, Pebble. So Just Take a Pebble, Emerson, Lake and Palmer live, go to YouTube. Here's what Keith Emerson did. I've never seen a piano player do this before or since. He used guitar pick on the strings. Well, if you know how a, an acoustic grand piano is built, it has dampers and hammers. So when you hit the three keys of a chord, let's say, the dampers come off and the hammers deploy, and that's what allows just those string strings to ring out, but nothing else. Well, Keith Emerson figured out hey, I can slowly push down those three string keys to push the dampers out of the way, but not hard enough to deploy the hammers. So he pushes those down gently, he stands over the piano, he takes his guitar pick, runs it across to all the strings in that area, Well, only the strings without the dampers ring out so he can create any chord he wants. That's how he starts the song just take a pebble so you know what he's doing when you do that. Never seen anybody do that before or since. And then keep listening because he shows off his amazing piano talent. And, of course, playing with him is Greg Lake, which we talk about all the time through this video, and Carl Palmer.